it's the man himself. It's James RPG Art. James, pleasure to meet you, sir. It just warned me that you're recording me, so. Oh, <laughs> yeah, so yeah. now you're on the books, man. Yeah. All right. A What's big up? part of uh, our Dwarven Moss uh, podcast now, and a big part of everybody's D and D experience, uh, seemingly across the D and D community. This is a guy who has created some like epic bullseye pieces of art that people just seem to flock to. Your stuff just floats to the top of the algorithm. People connect with it on D and D. Maybe, I don't know. Is it just us? I don't think so. I see it everywhere. It's <laughs> a real going. pleasure to have you. Keep going, man. <laughs> well, pleasure so, to meet you, man. This is it, the first time we've yeah. actually got to see eyes to eyes, face to face. Totally. Yeah, yeah. I'm um, excited to, yeah, to finally talk to you guys. Yeah, absolutely. So, so where wow. are you right now? You Remind us again, I'm you're England. a globetrotter. Yeah, yeah. I'm in England now. Um, oh. Yeah. Moved here, um, my wife and I, in November last year. So I was in Vancouver before yeah. that for like eight years. I moved, wow. moved from Australia. And then, yeah, we just um, packed up, sold everything, came over here. Right before the queen kicked it. Yeah, I know, just in time. Your perfect Maybe timing. For, um, her last celebration this year. It was actually pretty good, surprisingly. Yeah, her um, final jubilee. So, or, or did you get yeah, Canadian yeah. citizenship yet? Did you get no, Canadian no, citizenship? Not, not. Can we claim you as one of our own? Uh, not yet, not yet. Maybe if I yeah. come back there next time, just so uh, I don't have to go in through permanent resident stuff. But um, <laughs> yeah, no, I know I got here because my grandfather was from here, so I got a visa here, and then I got to bring her along as well. But yeah, yeah. No, that's pretty well. sweet. Um, we uh, we were really lucky that we had found you when we did we got bit by the uh dungeons and dragons bug uh, a couple of years ago and started our our journey together and said why don't we make a podcast out of it and we wanted to find some uh some artwork that would complement uh you know as as the practice is like having some uh you know art support against a game or just something to sort of help uh, inject flavor was something we were looking for and we came across your work and oh we God. all kind of independently found uh your curse of strahd illustrations yeah. and animations yeah uh, and all just sort of we all just had this big agreement like we could have been arguing about the sort of aesthetic and subtle nuances of the art of a lot of different things you can find online but we all sort of collectively high-fived over oh well this james rpg art guy seems to just have it figured out like it's a real like connection to what we uh feel an, an aesthetic connection to through the D D books um there's like a real sort of connection that it, it doesn't seem like that much of a jump from what the actual source material would describe it seems really specific to it and uh we we want to know how did you get started doing this like what what started your journey of uh of starting to do this were you an artist first and then kind of gravitated towards just kind of putting yourself in the D, &D side of things as, as a side hobby because i know your patreon got pretty successful mm. how did it how did it all start yeah well um i mean my my art career is kind of a pretty long story since I was a, since I was a teenager just um yeah super into film as a teenager and then I did some um film courses out of high school and then went from that um into more multimedia stuff so I started did another uh uni, university course and this is all in Australia um where I learned like 3D and a bunch of different stuff basic animation stuff um and then yeah I found um, that I really enjoyed effects and, and stuff like that. And after the, that course finished, I tried to find some of that stuff in Perth, which I did a little bit. I worked on like a small film there doing effects on, um, compositing visual effects and stuff on the film. But then, yeah, I mean, the reason I moved to Canada is just, there's no market in Perth, Australia. Right. Um, you're either working on like 
mining sim visualization stuff doing 3D. <laughs> just like, I don't know, doing your own thing, I guess. But, I but guess anyway, there's a yeah, lot of TV work stuff too in uh, Vancouver, a lot of sci-fi stuff. Or... Yeah, I mean, that, that's, that was, I, I basically was just like, okay, this is why I want, I want to work on movies because I love movies yeah. and, and TV and stuff. So where do I do that? And yeah, I mean, Vancouver. And I, luckily I had a friend who from high school who was in Vancouver at the time. So that oh, right on. basically locked it for me. But yeah, so I got, went there and got, got into the industry pretty quickly um, and did compositing stuff. So effects and um, TV and film for, I don't know, five years, I guess, until I realized that working in an office wasn't for me um and i got into D D in the meantime there i had played a little bit <laughs> i'd forced my friends to play fourth edition with me and that no i didn't have a clue how to run it <laughs> or what the hell even D D was i remember <laughs> but because like this is before fifth edition came out that there was yeah. really you could go on YouTube um, and like someone was literally teaching you how to play D&D. Mm. When before fifth edition, I was like, I've, I've heard about this thing, D&D, and it sounds cool. And I like video games. I like role-playing games. Um, so I, I, don't, I like fantasy. So I want to play this thing. But I, it literally took me ages to even like have some video. I think that um, Wizards of the Coast must have produced something with fourth edition some like little video of like, this is how to play a round of D&D. And even after that, I was like, I, I'm still confused. Yeah, but I'm even more confused completely. now, yeah. I'm, I'm going to read like, uh, spend like 30 hours reading fourth edition rule books and then force my friends, friends to try and play. So I did that a little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then one of my roommates in when I moved to Canada, he was like, oh yeah, playing a group. I'm like, let me join. <laughs> okay, <laughs> and then it began. Awesome. It began. I love it. So, yeah, I'm, I had a group for basically the entire time I was there, which was very lucky. Um, and yeah, I quickly went over to running the game. Um, and then, yeah, I played Rank Curse of And I was lucky with my the way that my um, contract work, working on TV and film was, because um, in the film industry, you can often take the summers off because you work so much. Um, the rest of the year okay. and then like I would just build up my savings and then for like three months in the summer just take it off and explore um, BC and do learn new skills and stuff so one of those years I was like I've always wanted to learn how to draw so that's what I did one summer I just taught myself how to draw um, with pencil sketching first and then I went into the computer and was like oh I'm gonna draw all my players characters so I did that and then, oh, I like, um, I've always liked um, concept art, so I'm going to try and do that. And so I just, yeah, started doing that. And then because I was playing Curse of Strider time, at the time, I think, yeah, they were the first characters. So I did all my, um, I was running Curse of Strider, so I did all my, the players' characters. And then... So James, I, were you DMing for this? You were the DM? Yeah, I was right. Yeah, I was, I was DMing Curse of Strider in... I don't know what year did it come out, like 2017. So it may have been 2018. The year it came out. I know it's been out for a while, but yeah, I think it's probably the year the year it came out. I ran it. And um that was like, I don't know, 18 months it took to get through it. Hmm. But yeah, so I painted all their characters and then just like as you were saying, um saying that I have been able to capture the vibe of the book and i think that's a credit to the source material itself and the book itself because i think curse of stride was the third adventure probably that i ran and i noticed one of the first things i noticed in, in that adventure was that the box text was so much better and so much more um atmospheric than any of the other adventures that i ran yeah and so it always like i always felt really really awkward reading out box text but in curse of Strahd, i was like i'm going to describe this and then i just want to read you to this guys because i think it's really well written yeah uh, we did the same thing with, with our game yeah. we we had uh, tom who was dming and he would describe in his own words he would keep the flow going like a dungeon master but then he would also read like verbatim from the book and it was really fun to just sort of like get a double take on it which then imprinted in our, in our minds 
we had the experience of of playing the game before uh, seeing your art. And so we had we painted the picture using the source material and our dungeon master. That's why I think when we came across your Curse of Strahd art, it was like we were seeing somewhere we've been before because oh, yeah. you clearly you, like, you took the, the details of our head. Right? We were just like, oh, that's exactly what it is. Well, well that's, yeah, that's credit to the book itself. The source. It's yeah, it's just really well written and um, very very atmospherically descriptive. Um, and it, it, the, the, the words themselves just paint such a good picture. And that was always kind of like a hesitation of mine to even do this to begin with, because I love the beauty of that, you know, it's, it's, it's in your head, really. It's, it's all imagination and that's, it's, um, a creative outlet for people. And, um, I think it's a very interesting thing that, you know, people see different things in their head and to, to, to kind of like take that away. I always almost felt bad about that. that well, I you know what? Of... Well, I will say to that, James, actually, this is something I was going to bring up because you have something, and this is sort of like a language that I've been finding with your D&D pieces. And I love it because these are the thing, the motifs that I see in everything. I see it in the bone room in the Vistani Hill is that you so very rarely put things in the foreground. So many things are usually in the background, in the midground. And what's cool about that is that there's this is sound really lame and art schooly, but you give the 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 viewer this sort of distance from the subject. Even in even in the um, the uh, um, Valaki, the town square, there's no one right in front of you. They're all far away. I'd say they're about you know eighty to hundred feet away at the fountain, and so there it's is an this open really canvas cool distance. That you allow the viewer to go, okay, I'm going to give you it, but I'm not going to give it all to you. I'm going to give you a general surrounding. And also, I mean, this goes, this is amazing that you, the art came after the D, D and D that's fantastic. Just putting all your visual senses together. Cause I think it totally, all that of course makes sense. Looking at all this incredible work, go, your framing is there. I can just imagine characters walking into this frame. Going, all right, let's go. And walking up it's to the very gates inviting. and whatever. It's very, very cinematic. So that has to be an intention too, right? You going in and going, maybe I won't put so much detail to ruin these images that people will have in their head, but I'll give them something. It's just enough fat to chew on to go, oh, this is a great visual. This gives me a great idea. Yeah, well, I, I think one of the things that with a lot of D&D art that especially stuff that people commission or whatever. It's just, it's all about the characters, right? Because D&D yeah. is characters and, and, and the players want to see their own characters visualized. Of course. So there's so many things, you know, you go on Reddit and it's like, I got my party painted and the, here's all our characters in the, in the tavern or whatever. Oh. And that's all well and good for those specific people. But, you know, that's not, that's, nobody else connects with that and it's like it's like that thing when you try to tell someone else who plays D, &D a story from your own D, &D game and it never hits <laughs> yeah it's like oh let me tell you this awesome thing that we like went and got the hand of vecner and the thing yeah. and that that we played this person i'm like oh we're so cool and the other people are just oh yeah and that's that's <laughs> i play D, &D. yeah like that's describing cool. a dream yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah exactly so that that kind of stuff just never hit with me um and uh, so, yeah, I kind of, um, be, and I guess as the the dungeon master, because I'm running it, it's all about, you know, I'm really into world building more so than, and that, that's kind of what I'm in, through the games that I run now, the homebrew yeah. stuff, I'm like into the atmosphere and um, the feeling and the tone of the world and stuff oh, and wow. the history and everything that's built on top of the land, um, more so than the characters that inhabit it. Um, right. Even though I, I do some awesome NPCs, but. <laughs> oh, 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 right. <laughs> you, you successfully made it uh, all of the works. And this is to what Chris is saying too, and what you're saying as well. It, it made it very accessible for everybody. It's a sort of universal um, uh, open, that it's not something specific it's something that everybody can kind of put their own game on it's sort of like a 
it's a support system. It it you made it successfully background without sort of featuring something that is so specific in your artworks. It's fun too, because it's kind of like you took the camera from the top down <clears throat> map and then just put it on the ground. Yeah, basically. Yeah. That was the thing that was always missing. I mean, the one really main thing that's missing from so many of the adventures is that they have so many maps and stuff, but really it's you don't really get much from the maps as no, you don't um, atmosphere yeah. or anything. You, just, you don't. There's like it's a grid basically. So there's no there's no storytelling that is really in the maps. Um, no, not at all. You could also see that there's a uh, a growth that you have uh, had. Like some of your earlier works are like you know more still images, like um, the uh, Svalich Woods. Um, you know, you have a still image here and you could see like a certain amount of brush strokes that you took into in, like on, on it. But then when you when you hit something up like the village of Barovia, Ooh. there's so much detail and little animations and blooming lights and <clears throat> more mists. And what, what was the journey yeah. there about how you started to add more flavor to it? Did, did you go from just taking still images and then start to learn and talk to us about the well, sort of journey yeah, of going across. Adding effects to stuff is what I did as a job, right, at the time. So um, I never had any problem. Like, I, technically, I never had any barriers of doing what I wanted to do. It was just the imagine of, like, what can I, what would move in the scene or what can I add to the scene to tell more of a story or... Um, yeah, every everything that that I put in animation wise is got to add to the atmosphere, to the tone, to the story. And if it doesn't, then I'm just not going to put it in. But um, yeah, it's uh, it's often a struggle that some, well, sometimes when you're you know there's like a like you're saying the woods or whatnot is just a woods, and if you stand in a woods in real life, nothing hey, you, nothing is moving. The trees are moving a little bit, or or the, the leaves, are, but if there's still there's like, what are you going to animate, really? Right, right. So, yeah, I mean, if it's a village or whatnot, the, uh, there's so many more options, like, that you can, especially if it's a night, there's lights on inside, there's, um, and then, you know, putting birds, as many birds as I possibly could. <laughs> yeah, birds. Yeah, birds I really mean, color everything. Just chuck, just chuck birds in there. And you there you go. Put a bird yeah. on it. Forest, they definitely became more and more uh, loopable over time. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. It's pretty great. Like the change from the woods to, uh, you know, like a Lake Zarovic or like the the mist or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Speaking of Lake Zarovic, um, yeah. I have a question that some one of our fans pointed out when they were watching uh, one of our episodes uh, that feature your art. They said in the Lake Zarovic mountain, they can see the face of a dog. Have you seen this? Totally intentional. Amazing. Yes, they, they it's it's there. Oh it's my there. god, awesome. Oh, okay. All right, all right. Yeah, Easter because I was I'm looking at that and I'm that like, that is a happy like... accident because I see the dog, the ear, the eyes, the nose, the mouth, everything. <laughs> yeah. It's wild. It's Love one of those that. hidden hidden images. Yeah, yeah, totally. And that you was... were also able to uh, uh graciously you delivered to us uh drawings of our characters from our campaign that have since become at least in our lives some of the most uh iconic characters that we will ever know just from our own world and bubble of importance and specialness yeah um, well, was this the first time that you guys had really played D D? &D? yes that is we had as kids as kids, we played on and off. Yes, we we did. I think when I was a kid, I played like uh, AD and D, like just two point or something like that. I played right. with Tom like once or twice, but we were we were young and we didn't know how to really, um, you know, economize all the things that D and D offers in terms of like you know the narrative and role playing and descriptions and rules and really making it sing the way we're still learning how to do. It's like working on a golf swing; it's just forever just working on it. But when we got together to make to play Curse of Strahd, it was certainly the first time 
with our mature brains and with a sort of gusto in our spirits to sort of really take in the D&D uh, world. And uh, it bit us really hard. And so we made these characters. And then you made these uh, uh, illustrations of them. And subsequently, we were able to take them and we made little animations of them. And they really came to life. And so first and foremost, um, thank you for that. Because oh, it, it, it really means a lot to the us. Biggest thank you. Because we yeah, really love them. We think that they're right up our alley and right, right, right on the money. Have you um, done done this before? I know you probably can take commissions. And uh, have you reached out or, or been in contact with other D and D groups that have kind of reached out to you and talked to you about your art? Um, I mean, yeah, people ask me for commissions, and my answer is pretty much always, I don't do commissions um i love so, that man that's the coolest well like i'm doing it on my schedule <laughs> i mean to be honest it's uh i worked so fucking hard to be able to quit my job to be able to do this oh, dude, stuff that, Absolutely. Like, as soon as i started the patreon and i like the first month got i don't know 80 bucks or something i just thought oh my god is this what is this people will this pay me real. for this what does this mean does this mean <laughs> do this thing and it's really fun and it's something that i just want to do anyway yeah and so yeah i mean uh yeah for the the, the amount that i that i had to put in to be able to get to the point where i was able to quit my office job that like i just want to make my own stuff and even if you know, I'm, I'm giving up. Someone's going to pay me a bunch to do commission work. I'm just like, I'm really just not interested. Um, yeah. Unless it's like something like you guys that um, actually interests me and is cool and is something new and I'm going to have fun doing it. Um, yeah. And uh, when you guys did send me your original stuff, it's, that's why I ask. Like, does the first time you play is just... Holy shit! As a, I don't, I, I'm not exactly sure which one of you is the DM, but you're so lucky to have these guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. I, I don't. You you guys just must. Um, uh, yeah, you must be like me and just uh, just I don't know. Well, we have a film background uh, as well. Uh, yeah, um, I was going to say. We come from mean, film. Both, both I... Chris and I have been on TV before, a acting oh, okay. and been in the improv world together. Yeah, oh, Jay um, and I. So it was a nice crossover. Yeah, uh, Jay and I met uh, working at Second City. So I was performing there. Jay was doing the music. Tom okay. is also a musician as well, and Tom knows Jay from their history. But we, I have the same history as you, James. Like, so you know, I went to school for uh, uh, film and uh i love film always been a nerd always love video games i i only had the D, D books when i was a kid but this was really my first you know jay tom and some other friends uh, of ours we did a, a D, D game just trying it out we had all sort of picked up 5e tom was the one who has the most play history experience uh but the, yeah this truly was our first sit down going no we're gonna we're gonna play this game <laughs> and it kept, popped yeah. out like this. It popped out pretty well. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a good thing that you just chose to record it as well. Um, and yeah, it turned into something pretty cool. But yeah, as soon as you sent me the original the original um, clips when you were first working on it, it was it was original. I thought it was a cool idea, and it inspired me inspired me uh, immediately. So I was like, oh yeah, that'll be fun. Um, so yeah, other than stuff like that, I. Um, someone will send me something or or present me with something that's i think is cool and would just like want to contribute to it anyway because i think it's cool um other than that yeah i just uh, not really interested <laughs> so yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. yeah it's well, super lucky to be able to do that that's too, but uh yeah any favorites well, speaking speaking of your interests uh theme i notice in your work you do kind of tend to something i like you know i had the option of bringing whatever adventure uh I, I felt like and i just love ravenloft vibes and the the horror vibes and i see that you do a lot of work with uh like rhyme of the frost maiden a lot of a lot of the spookier campaigns so i was just wondering like what do you have a, a love of like this gothic horror or is there 
a little something to those spooky world building uh, images that you create so often yeah so i definitely loved when i was um figuring out what adventure i wanted to run next from her friends um what i can't remember what else was out at the time definitely the dragon queen the first one and then the giants one whatever that was called right yeah storm, oh, yeah. storm giants, king's thunder storm king yeah yeah, yeah. i think yeah. first drive may have been the third that they released i don't know if there was another one before but anyway it definitely seemed like the best option at the time because <laughs> there was a kind of limited so i'm like all right this is going to be the one that i'm going to run yeah and i mean i think it still was probably rated as the the best adventure that they produced in fifth edition um well by far the most popular so that must say something um yeah really but yeah i mean i connect with it as like a lot of people do i think the genre is pretty awesome um and yeah just again as i said the the source material all the writing and it's so atmospheric and totally on point um that yeah you can it just paints such a good picture and uh, one of my favorite artists that got me into um, uh, wanting to do concept art is a guy called uh, Jacob Rosalski, who does a artwork for, well, he, he has his own worlds that he built, but he, the board game Scythe. Um, oh, oh, yeah, I've heard of that. He, he did all the artwork for that. Jay and I and played that. Is, we played is, it, yeah. Yeah, with uh, yeah, I was super inspired by his stuff because he's, it, all of his stuff is naturally like very, very misty and atmospheric and, and whatnot. He has a world with uh, wolves and and then, yeah, the side one with all the like 1920s mechs and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. Um, Whoa. Um, so, yeah, the, the, his his stuff is my number one inspiration to hmm. wanting to start to paint in that style. And it was kind of just coincidental that Raven oh, lost yeah. his set in that area. But as far as... um the rhyme of frost maiden goes i haven't played it i read it um i thought it was cool and it was the new one basically around the time that i finished all of the I mean, the majority of the important um curse of stride locations and i was like well i want to make continue make stuff that's usable um to as many people as possible for the patreon and so I think that uh, that was like the second most popular at the time. So, and and as a, you know, doing the snowy kind of thing is is a different setting and interesting to jump back and forth. And that's more recently I've done some of the um, uh, Baywild one. I forget the name. Of oh that yeah, one. Um, those are great. Oh yeah, the witch, the the carnival, yeah, light, the, the carnival witch light carnival. <laughs> Thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wild along the wish light. Wild along the wish light. Yeah. <laughs> That's so that one's yeah. like a completely different um vibe as well. Oh, totally. um, so yeah, it's it's kind of fun going back and forth. And then doing um more recently doing my own homebrew world stuff, which has been, you know. For me, the best because it's like completely my own stuff. Oh, that's fun yeah. doing the uh the homebrew stuff. So you don't your your source material is your own. That must be a completely different experience. Yeah. Well, um, that was last year that I, like, like many people, my, um, my group had a hiatus. And when we were last year playing to come back and play, uh, it had been so, it had been a while that I kind of wanted to just like stop. We were, we were playing, I think, Lord of the Rings um, setting at the time. And um, it felt hard that it, it was going to, to pick it up again. So I was like preparing or what do I want to run. So I had enough experience that I want to, yeah, just like take everything that I like from all the fantasy different stories or genres or books that I like and kind of smash them all together and, um, yeah, try to make something unique in that way. Um, and so, yeah, started working on my own story, homebrew world setting and then we played a little bit in that and then i ended up moving but continued to develop it and then um yeah make artwork for it that i put on my patreon and um are you using 5e um, rules always sticking to 5e was, or any yeah, other was, rule systems 5e but it's 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 kind of <laughs> the world is not really um the 5e probably is not the best because 
there's no inherent magic, natural magic in my world. There's something okay. magical. Okay. So um, in that way, we uh, and again, my like our group was pretty experienced, so we could kind of just like chop and change the rules to fit what we wanted to play. Love that. Um, but uh, so yeah, I mean, it's it's kind of just a a setting really that I just like telling the story and writing the story of at the moment and the history. And as I said, I'm just really into. Um, I mean, being in, in England, it's all about. Well, I'm learning about the history and all the places that we go to have so much history, and it's yeah, it's, it, uh, it's really the heart and soul of this country. Um, and so that kind of has inspired and informed a lot of my interest in the the people of of the world and and uh, building the cultures and the dynamics between people. And I really enjoy all that kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, making the artwork for that has been awesome. And trying to make a new project with that and sell the artwork in a different way. Um, and yeah, hopefully at some point make a, a setting book. I mean, at least that's the goal. In, oh yeah, down the road a little Great bit. Yeah, but we'll see. Nice. We'll see how that goes. Well, one thing I love about your the homebrew world, which I obviously don't be I'm not entirely familiar with, but a lot of those images are so uh applicable you know it's like oh swamp scene great i mean what good what what reasonable D D campaign doesn't have a good doesn't need a good swamp pick you know yeah exactly and i love um the usability of uh your stuff beyond being like partitioned to a certain campaign i, I really do enjoy the the recent stuff you're doing quite a bit yeah these yeah. Big, beautiful landscapes they've just been mm. gorgeous to look at the plains and the deserts and even the chult the jungle one I'm like holy moly this is phenomenal yeah well that's i've had the idea recently of of trying to do that because um i don't know if i'm going to completely get away probably not from doing uh just actual adventure stuff from published adventures um but yeah, because I've done so much of that now that yeah. doing is that is like that. That is, um, and and to be honest, the the homebrew game that I'm running at the moment is a lot of travel stuff. So right. it's kind oh, of cool. in a self way that I get to use it myself. <laughs> <laughs> I never got to use any of the Curse of Stride stuff. I think I did two, right, of course. Um, I did the first one, which was the Van Richter's Tower, and then the second one I ever did was the Solanka Pass. Salanka Pass was the only one that I ever got to show to my players oh. as they got to Salanka Pass. <laughs> oh. I didn't do it the rock campaign. And then I was like, oh, I liked making that art. Yeah. I'm not, gonna, I'm not playing Curse of Stride anymore, but it seems popular. So um, maybe I'll make art for the community. And so I just, yeah, I never got to use any of it. And only just recently I was like, Maybe I should go run back and run Curse of Stride again so I get to use it. <laughs> so I could just up. use it. Yeah, I have a reason Dude, to I use this. I love Van stuff. Richten's Tower, yeah. man. Well, yeah. what, you know what? what? If you're not is... using it, I can promise you everyone around the world is using it <laughs> because we. I had actually run Curse of Stride after our game, and I used so many of those. The Werewolf Cave Mouth and everything in Valaki and all the Kresk stuff, and it all just... It just colored it so nicely. Well, I'm um, glad you got something out of it. Oh, uh, well, thank you, sir. Thank <laughs> you. Um, what I was going to say, this is going to end soon. This meeting is going to end soon. So um, we don't want to take a bunch of your time, James, but we just wanted to thank you again. Just, maybe just some last thoughts. I was wondering, what do you think of Rings of Power? Have you been watching Rings of Power? Okay, here we go. <laughs> yeah, here we I know. Go. I know. Okay, good, good. <laughs> Remember, know. we uh -oh. only have three minutes oh, left. Here, loose connection, so. guys. Oh, he blacked out. <laughs> yeah. Um. I just. Uh, <laughs> I just uh, was talking to my my dad and my brother there in Australia. I was just um, video chatting with them and talking to them about it. For they're not watching it, but I was just telling my thoughts on it for like half an hour so we don't have another half an hour. fair enough <laughs> yeah. it's but a whole different smart. episode yeah it's um i don't know it's it's not lord of the rings i do i didn't expect it to be lord of the rings it's not lord of the rings no. um and yeah it's um it's not great so far but <laughs> i'm gonna keep watching it yeah so. yeah me too yeah. good flavor well, I I keep trying it looks nice yeah not that's a lot of money right yeah
Yeah. yeah cool world. Uh, what I was saying, I think the most important part will be in, I don't know, a decade from now, if this will be a time capsule of like just such of the times, like the, the, the times at the moment have influenced this show so much. And yeah. I think in, in such a, in such a negative way that like the, so much money in the best, the, the most um, expensive show ever made. So influenced by the times. And I wonder if in 10, 20 years, looking back on this, like we do with the movies now, if it'll be like, Oh yeah, that's uh, let's, uh, let's not do that again. Let's try to, let's try to, be true to storytelling, but let's be true to, I don't know, the, the, the foundations of, of like humanity and stuff that this, the Lord of the Rings is really about. That Which, is um, such a good point. That is, you might be onto something. You might be onto something. Yeah. 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 Well, James, uh, we can't thank you enough. Uh, you've, we, we do actually, uh, truthfully consider you someone who has, uh, contributed, uh, a nice little mark on the D&D community online. Uh, Absolutely. We hope that uh, our interview can at least maybe sway some other people or, or at least showcase some of your, your work uh, to some new people that'll find it. Um, we hope that you keep creating more. Um, we're Definitely. following and, and uh, we're supporting you. So um, we just want to thank you. And thanks so much for coming and uh, talking to Dwarven Moss. Yeah, dude, much appreciated. Yeah. Such a Thanks pleasure. For awesome to talk to you guys and keep making your stuff. It's uh I've listened to a bunch of it and it's really it's 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 getting better, but it's from the start it was really, really good. So yeah, we're having Thanks, a blast Bob. doing it. Yeah. Thanks. That's all that matters, really. Yeah. Yeah. That's all that matters, absolutely. Yeah. All right, boys. Well, awesome. thank you so much, James. This is gonna end in second. So have a lovely rest of your evening, pal. We'll talk soon. We'll keep, keep in, in touch. touch. Yeah, for sure. All right, All right man. Take care, sure, brother. Good. You see ya. Bye. See ya. This concludes another episode of Dwarven Moss. If you'd like to support us, consider joining our Patreon or buy us a coffee. Leave us a comment or ask a question and we'll answer it on one of our episodes of Talking Moss. Dwarven Moss is presented by the Sonar Network.